Greetings again, Jason from Ishibashi Music Shibuya in Tokyo here, and I'm standing next to a gentleman who you might have seen on Facebook that I met uh, in March of last year, Mr. Alex Skolnick from Testament. How are you, Alex? Hello, konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Nice to see you again, Nice mate. to see you. Um, Alex, I actually have uh, one of Alex, personally I own one of Alex's old former unofficial signature Ibanez models, the 540p2, and uh, I showed that to you, that kind of freaked you out when you saw that. Yeah, I don't think like much of those anymore. Yeah, yeah. But now you're with ESP? Yeah, this has worked out great. Um, these are the, the guitars. There's um, the ESP and the LTD version. Yep. Uh, I play them both. Right. And, um, it's uh, it's worked out really well. It's a little bit of uh, my yeah you know, what I, what I like about my favorite classic guitars, but a little easier to play. Yeah, the silver burst is pretty cool. I won't mention where that color came from, but that's a cool color. Where does it come from? Gibson. Oh yeah, I don't know. I don't even know that. Oh really? Yeah. yeah no, no. It's a classic old Gibson color from their customs. Oh. Well, I mean, let's, let's face it, the whole design is based on a, the, the great Les Paul. Yeah, of course. Who was a great? Who was a guy? He wasn't just. A, I saw a play many times. He wasn't, he wasn't just a guitar. Now, see, he was a big jazz influence on you. Is that right? Um, he was a big all-around influence because he's a, he was one of those guys that um, the hardcore jazz players that I know that. They're not big Les Paul listeners. Like everybody, they appreciate it. Yep. Um, you know, same with blues and rock. But he's one of these guys that he he had uh, a foot in all those different genres and kind of made it his own thing. And, and I, I kind of do that too. I, I don't think you know if, if you're looking for the most cutting edge modern jazz guitar player, I wouldn't say go listen, listen to me. You know, that's not well, what I've, I've, I've heard you play in my store. You're Amazing at oh, playing thank you. jazz. Well, I, I like to think I could do, play jazz professionally, which I do. I work with some great artists, but it's, I'm not so devoted to it that it's, you know, it, you know I'm like the cutting edge in that. Thing. In fact, I'm not really the cutting edge in anything, but I do have this blend. And there, it's a certain type of guitar player, I think, that has a blend. And I think, uh, yeah, Les Paul is one of those inspirations where it's just it's a blend of a lot of things. So another guy like that who passed away, unfortunately, was Danny Gatton. Yeah, you know, the great telecast. Oh, phenomenal. Yeah, and um, you know, and I think like the best studio artists and the best hired players are, are like that. Larry Carlton and so on. Yeah, yeah, and they can do a little bit. I, I I don't just like to do one thing. The thing that sets, like, as a guy who's been listening to you back, obviously, with Testament, with Sabotage, and various things you've done over the years, I'm always blown away with you that, much like Steve Morse, there's not many guys who genuinely can play multiple styles in a genuine fashion, yet you are, like, a very prolific metal player and an incredibly, like, bang-on jazz player. Well, whatever, whatever situation I'm in, whatever house I'm visiting, I'm very respectful of that that house, yeah. <laughs> I may bring slight elements from other uh, genres, but I, I'm quite. I don't. I don't try to flood uh, one genre with the influences of another. Yeah, fair enough. And also, I don't attempt it unless I'm I'm really schooled at it, or I'm with. Yeah, for, for that reason, I try to work with musicians that really know what they're doing in those fields. So they and they make me play a certain way. Like, for example, I just, just have, I have a new album out, which uh, I can show you. Sure. If you have a second. Of course. Very cool. We're going to get to see something very exclusive right here. Yeah, this is called um, <clears throat> Planetary Coalition. This is my first acoustic album. Wow. Um, it's got 27 musicians from five continents. Um, it's a double album. That's a little eclectic. Yeah, it's 14 songs, uh, 75 minutes, double album. Um, and, and it's got a good, anyway, so for this, I've, I've got, a, for example, I have a Cuban song, and I have uh, El Negro Hernandez, and his daughter Jennifer Hernandez on that. Uh, I have a song uh, inspired by Mexico, I have Rodrigo y Gabriela, and then I have wow. a song, um, a traditional Chinese piece. And I have this wonderful uh, pipa player, Yihan Chen. We do a duet. I have a piece from Africa with a great uh, kora player named Yakuba Sissoko. Um, I have a Turkish piece with a kanun player. Kanun. So I'm, I'm working with these artists. And, these, and when you play with people like this, um, it makes you play a certain way. And uh, another influence as far as you know, doing this type of thing is uh, Ry Cooter. And Ry Cooter somebody I 
I don't I don't necessarily transcribe his licks. Sure. But he'll do an album with um, this yeah, bass, great this Indian bass. artist. He'll do an well, album. With, yeah, his, he's very famous. Oh, Rocky is insane. insane. And Buena Vista Social Club. Yeah. Yeah. But he also worked with Linda Ronstadt in the '70s. You know, so it's like and, and all this great blues stuff. Did you know? So anyway, this is. Um, this is a, just a good example of that of working so, uh, with yeah, players and, stuff different, and having and being affected by that. And obviously, when I play with Testament, these guys can play metal. These guys live, breathe, and eat metal. Yeah, of course. They are the sort of you know tattooed, vest wearing guys. I love these guys. These are my brothers. But I've always been a little different. I'm, but it, that I think it works in that sense. So, so whatever situ situation I'm in, whether it's the world situation, the uh, the metal. Situation the jazz, I, yeah, I work with players that are very authentic. It's great that you can do it all. Thank you. I was going to mention with Ry Cooter, did you know that he was actually Ralph Macchio's um, trainer I did. in the Crossroads movie? Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so and he's, he's playing all those those blues licks. He's all that's that's him. Ry yeah, Cooter. It's not Ralph Macchio. No, well, obviously. I mean, <laughs> we'd all be transcribing Ralph Macchio. If <laughs> That'd that be was bizarre, really, wouldn't yeah. it? So, any plans of coming back to Japan or down to my home country of Australia? Or Ed, who's holding the camera for us from uh, from New Zealand, any chance of getting down to any of our countries anytime soon again on tour that you know of? Uh, not that I know of. It'll happen. You know, you just you wait for the phone call or the, the email from the booking agent. Yep. Um, right now, uh, there's there's a U.S. tour planned with Testament. Um, I'm doing a lot of stuff in New York with uh, Planetary Coalition, a seven. Uh, uh, seven unit version wow. of this. And, uh, the, are you selling these today? I am. I'm going to buy one off of oh, you. Oh, that'd be great. I'm serious. I'm going to buy one. That'd be great. And you can buy these at uh, planetarycoalition.com. They're available on Amazon. They're available um, at Artishare. That's a, a arts label that I've worked this through. Fantastic. And I have them today at NAMM. So we'll make sure I get them. All right. Well, uh, I hope to bump into you again in my store in Shibuya. We get a few artists. Absolutely. I love the store. I mean, mean to go back. And I saw the... Uh, I saw Ro Rush posted something about uh, the story. Yeah, Alex Lyson dropped in. And uh, yeah, so I, I clicked on it. And I'm like, yeah, I, want, I went to that. And then there's you. I'm like, I, I remember that guy. That's the guy that <laughs> filmed me. <laughs> I, yeah, I wish I'd gone the same day. Yeah, but, well, actually, you know, the funny thing is, you were in, I think it was March 18th or something, and he was in on April 4th, so you only missed him by like two really weeks. Really just missed him. And the funny thing is, he wasn't on the tour, he, yeah, was, he was just, just on holiday. Yeah, yeah. So, cool. so amazing. An unbelievable world of coincidences. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Mr. Scott. Yeah, absolutely. It's always Jason. good to see you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Jason from Ishibashi Music, rock on here at the 2015 NAMM show with Mr. Alex Skolnick. This year.